forest right now. So. It's such weird sand. It's like, I mean, it's just very fine rocks, but it's so soft. It's just lava. Like That was a peacock. We're Chris and Sarah, a husband and wife traveling creative duo on a mission to experience as much in life as possible. Oh. This channel is dedicated to documenting our adventures that will turn into memories that will last a lifetime. We're inviting you to join us as we try new things, meet new friends, and see the world from a new point of view, one adventure at a time. Let's go. Good morning. Today we're doing one of the most anticipated parts of our trip, which is driving the road to Hana. It's early and we were told to get an early, early start because the parking lots along the way do fill up. And we found this little coffee shop bakery right on the way, it's the one that opens earliest. So we're stopping here, it's got good reviews. So we're gonna get coffee and breakfast because we have a lot of driving today. Lay beside me, wake the morning. We're ready to drive the road to Hana. Let's go, I'm so excited. Just started driving the road to Hana, and everybody on the internet and in person said use Gypsy Travel, Gypsy Traveler. G Gypsy, Gypsy Tra Traveler, it's right here. Gypsy yeah. Traveler. So it's an app, it's, how much was it? It was $10, okay. and they have different routes all across America, but everyone said specifically download this one for the road to Hana. Yeah, so what it is, is it's got a GPS integration to it. So it follows you along as you're driving and it will automatically commentary where to stop, what to do, what you're looking at. It's a very long and very windy road. Apparently there's like tons of hairpin turns, like 50 something one way bridges you have to take your turn on. We heard people say that this is a really great app because it's keeping you entertained and it's interacting with you while you're sitting and waiting in line. So it kind of helps the time to pass in some of those more frustrating and longer moments. But we're gonna set off. It's a rainy day for driving. I'm hoping that it clears up a little bit. Typically when we've been here, it's been rainy overnight and then morning time turns sunny and it looks like the sun's trying to break out. So we'll see what kind of weather we have. We got an early start. We started driving at 6.30 and I'm hoping that we are early into the crowds. We have a pass for the Black Sand Beach, the state park from 10 to 12.30. And we'll talk more about that later, but we do have to be to that point by 10 a.m. Yeah, and this guy's voice sounds like you're on the Disney tram. Aloha, my friends. The most famous and adventurous drive on Maui is the road to Hana. And it looks like we're planning on doing it. It does. He sounds like, please stand clear of the doors. That guy, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, Por favor. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. That's cool. That was a peacock. Just found a banana tree. <laughs> I love it. Look how cute they are. So my dad grew up on Guam, or lived in Guam for a couple years. He was growing up. He was an Air Force kid, 
and he would always talk about climbing the banana trees and picking the bananas and that's one of the stories that I remember the most about him telling me when I was a kid and I always thought that'd be so cool to see a banana tree in real life and now I'm looking at one I've never seen one in person look at the little bananas growing on them so I'm not a huge plant guy I think plants are nice but I don't go out of my way to stop and stare at them however this arboretum is very very cool it's small it's not like an arboretum that you'd see in the main layout where it's like really finely manicured and all that kind of thing it's wild and it feels like a jungle and it feels like hawaii so there is a pathway that goes through it and it is muddy because these shoes are gonna be so muddy i'm not putting these back on in the car so where were we going with this we were talking about how pretty the plants are oh, and yeah. how pretty this is. I'm just so focused on my feet are really muddy right now and I just showered. If you are doing the road to Hana, this is about what, 45 minutes in, an hour in? 40, 45 minutes in, yeah. It's not that far in, but everybody seems really focused on stopping at the waterfalls. And we have heard time and again, there are a thousand waterfalls a day. So if you miss one, catch the next one. And Chris and I have this whole place to ourselves and there's a river running through it and it's beautiful and quiet and it's such a nice little place to get out and stretch your legs and walk and see Hawaii. Yeah, so we're gonna go back to the car now and then continue the road to Hana. Oh, but why this place is important by road to Hana standards. This place is significant because it's your best chance to legally see the rainbow eucalyptus trees. So there are some other places you're gonna see them on the side of the road but they're private property. This is your best shot and they're huge and you can walk right up to them and just get a great picture in front of them and just look at how massive they are. So they're beautiful. All Stop right. Stop here. Let's go. I asked her, I was like, where can we get a good smoothie on the road? And she said, here. It's got papaya, lily koi, strawberry, and mango. And it's so sweet and good. What else did you get? Oh, and banana bread. I love banana bread. Banana bread's Hawaiian. So we got two little banana bread loaves. Not gonna lie, they're a little pricey, but apparently it's supposed to be really good here. So we got one regular and one chocolate chip macadamia nut. I love macadamia nuts, but y'all know Chris is allergic to nuts. So we each got our own little loaf to sort of snack on the next several days, if they last that long. Next, we're going to the Black Sand Beaches. So we're at Waianapa Napa. State Park, which is known for the Black Sand Beach. They do have a couple other things here, like a trail around the cove and a blowhole that you can go and watch like the ocean blow up between the rocks. Where's the water? It's such weird sand. It's like, I mean, it's just very fine rocks, but it's so soft. It's just lava, like it is busy. This is permanent. We'll talk more about this in a minute, but this is as busy as it's gonna get, pretty much. You have, to, you have to reserve your spot to come by time slot. So we have a two and a half hour time slot from 10 to 1230 days when we got. It's a smaller beach than I was expecting. Because you hear a lot of people talk about it and it's not that big, but it's it's manageable with the number of people, right? They won't let me fly a drone here. Otherwise I would. It's beautiful. So it's a beautiful little beach. It's very, it's smaller than what I thought it was going to be. I agree. Um, I think one of the things that's surprising about this beach is that how busy it is, even though it's permitted. Um, like we see people in their bathing suits and towels and chairs and they're like heading down to the beach and it's so small and crowded. I'm like, it doesn't look relaxing at all to do that. And you can't be here very long anyway because the time slots are about two and a half hours. At least ours is. I think they're all about that same length. Yeah. So if you come here, just know that it's probably going to be busy. And I mean, if you want to get in the water, that's great. It's fine. Um, I just, it's, it's not a good beach to like get your tan on. It's, it's a beautiful beach and it's definitely one to stop at. The permit to get in, 
it's kind of funny and kind of tricky about how to do it. We didn't even book ours until we got here because you cannot do it more than 14 days in advance, but you can't do it less than 48 hours in advance. So you really have to do it between two and 14 days before you're planning on visiting the beach. I did ours about a week ago when we first landed and it, I got the spot we wanted. So there were actually several time slots available still and we're not totally peak season yet, but we're getting there where it's Christmas week right now. Um, and they said winter and summer are the busiest time. So I'd say book as soon as you can in the time window. And if you're starting in Paia, like most people are, if you're doing this whole trip in one day, I, it was recommended that we get somewhere around 11 a.m. and we were lucky enough to get the 10 to 12.30 slot. That way when you're working your way down the road to Hana, going west to east, you'll hit this beach around your time slot. So it worked out really well for us. So a little tidbit there. And I think it was $5 per adult plus $5 or $10 for parking. It's a must see. Like you it need really to see is. it, especially if you're not going to any of the other islands in Hawaii and you want to see a black sand beach, this which is the, the best one here. The black sand was not what I expected. It was no. soft and I mean, it was beautiful. It, it was, um, it almost reminded me of that stuff. Did you ever have it when you were a kid and you'd play with it? And it was kind of like Play-Doh, but yet it like foamy kind of stuff. Like yeah. your hand, like your, the sand didn't absorb the water the way that normal sand seems to. It just sort of like, it was weird how you sunk in. It was just different. So you need to see it for yourself. It's still very soft. It's very, it's a nice beach. Like I wish it were larger so you could hang out there, but there's plenty of other beaches on the road to Hana. So look on the map and find a different one if you want to hang out on the beach. Yeah. So we're here, we're hanging out and now we are, we're over halfway mm -hmm. to Hana and we're going past Hana technically, technically, but I think we're probably going to get in the car, continue the drive. And then again, I am getting hungry. Again? Again. Yes. We've been th we're more snackers today, I guess. We're not really doing meals, are we? Well, we'll see. We'll see. I knew better than to take wipe. All right, it's about noon. That means it's lunchtime, and there's no better place than to get food than some food trucks. I'll say you will. I'll say you pineapple, banana, granola, chia. I just want something fresh. I'm warm, hot. We've been snacking all day, so I didn't want like, what'd you get, tacos? I didn't really want tacos. I wanted something like refreshing. Me, on the other hand, decided to get a mahi-mahi burrito. This is the longest you've ever gone without a burrito? This is the longest I've ever gone without a burrito. Uh -huh. lunch inside the town of Hana. There's a couple little food truck, uh, little squares. Like there's several food trucks in town. There's one spot and then there's one a little bit further down. We ate the first one. Got some lunch in us, got some coffee at the second food truck stop. <laughs> and now we're starting to drive. So the first place on the drive after Hana, some people stop in Hana, keep going so you can go back to Haleaka and do um, a few of the more like the pool hikes. And then there's, um, there's just more to see past Hana. Koki Beach, is that right? Koki Beach? K-O-K-I, Koki Beach. Uh, anyway, very strong recurrence, but I heard somebody call this the Red Sand Beach. We already saw the Black Sand Beach, and this is the Red Sand Beach. The sand itself has a little bit of a red tint to it, but it's more the red rocks behind, so the sand on the ground does look pretty red in contrast to the really blue water. So it's a really pretty little beach. If you don't swim here, rip currents are very strong. So in case you've never seen one before, this is a banyan tree. This is, they call it the giant banyan tree. This is really large for one. <laughs> so I love them because their trunks, like they have these vines that sort of become their trunks. Like they almost, they're very whimsical looking. So this is a giant banyan tree. And I know it seems weird to have like a tree as being like the, one of the main attractions on the trail, but they really are impressive and they're really beautiful. 
It's like the Hawaiian weeping willow. You'll see them in the mainland too. I've seen them around like Miami area. Ready? Wanna go see the bamboo? The humidity is out in full effect. I've got dirt under my fingernails and toenails and in every crack and crevice. This <laughs> this is not a complaint. No. This is I'm us having fun. fun. <laughs> I really am. I feel like a kid. I feel like I say I feel like a kid in a lot of videos. Every time we're having fun, I'm like, I'm a kid. <laughs> so we're in a bamboo forest right now. Is that what you would call it? Yeah, they call it the bamboo forest here on the trail. And the whole trail is two miles each way. So four miles total, and the top is the waterfall that we are sort of walking alongside the whole way. Um, we are crunched for time. It is already three o'clock. It's gonna get dark in 5.30, and there's stuff we want to see on the way back too. So we're gonna stop here at the Bamboo Forest, which is about halfway to the top. So a mile in, if you wanna do half the trail, you'll get the Bamboo Forest, the giant banyan tree, and then at the beginning of the trail, there's a fork, and you can go right, which is taking you to the pools. Again. The road to Hana has taken a l much longer than we anticipated. Oh it's it's a long trip. And they they yeah. told us it was going to be an all day thing, but we have like skipped stuff, like so many things. And we're still going to get back after dark, I think. Yeah. So we're going to hurry down the mountain and try to see some more. Let's go. Everything we've shown you thus far has been totally free. Except for food. Except for food. The banana bread is not a free snack on the way. Yes. Now, the only thing that costs money is this park that we're in right now, and it's the National Park. So you can have your all American the Beauty Pass, whatever it's called. Uh, America the Beautiful. America the Beautiful Pass. And that'll get you in. Otherwise, you have to pay a fee, and I'll put it right here. $30. $30 for three days. But that also gets you into Haleakala for sunrise or sunset. Yeah. So if you want to go up to the top of the crater, that pass gets you in. It's only three days that the pass is good for, whereas like the national parks in the mainland are typically seven days if you want to pay by park. But the America the Beautiful Pass, I think it's $80 a year, and we pay for ours time and time again. Um, and it's like unlimited access to all national parks. We'll link it down below, but it's a great deal. So if you're like us and you love visiting national parks, we highly recommend the America the Beautiful Pass. I'm gonna link it down below, but what that is, is it's an annual pass into all the national parks, anything run by the National Park Service, whether it's a battlefield, a memorial, um, anything like that, it gets you into that for free. I mean, you pay it one time, $80, REI sells them, but I'm gonna link it down. Um, but yeah, totally worth the money. Just finished up at Haleakala National Park. We just did the hike, two hikes. I'm tired. I'm sweaty. It's not really that hot. It's just humid. <laughs> I'm like sweat through my shirt. <laughs> Nuts. So we're all the way at the end of the road to Hana. Or at least the part people drive. Yeah. So now we're going to head back, which is going to take about two hours or so. Yeah. So you can go all the way around on the southern 
southeastern side of the island, but that road is pretty rough. This is not our car, so we are not doing that. We're gonna go back the same way we came, through Hana and then on to Paia. All right, let's go. Be sure to follow along on Instagram and like and subscribe here. It really helps creators like us.